Hi, I'm Clara from Online Fabric Store. This throw pillow uses a strip quilt method to create a pattern. If you haven't quilted before, that's not a problem. Doing a smaller project like this is a good introduction. You can also use this technique to make a larger quilt. So let's get started. The materials you'll need are several quilting fabrics. I'm using Michael Miller Dum Dot in Robin's Egg, Tangerine, Charcoal, and Citron. A pencil or marker, a rotary cutter or scissors, fusible fleece or batting, printer paper, a zipper and seam ripper, which are optional, a ruler, pins, thread, a pillow form, and an iron. Measure and cut a piece of fabric for the back of the pillow that's the same size as your pillow form. I'm using a 16 by 16 inch pillow. The seam allowance will be half an inch all around so the finished cover will end up being one inch smaller. Making covers one to two inches smaller than the pillow form will make the pillow look nice and full. Next, cut two pieces of the fusible fleece that are the same as the back piece minus the seam allowance, so 15 by 15 inches. Finally, cut a couple of one and a half inch strips of each of the colors. Cut four squares of printer paper that are each the finished dimensions of your pillow, plus one and a quarter inches, then divided by two. For this pillow, that's eight and one eighth inches. Draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Then draw lines that are three quarters of an inch on both sides of the line so that it's the same as the one and a half inch strips. Place one of the strips between the lines and pin the fabric to the paper. Choose your next fabric and place it on top of the other strip with the right side facing down. Sew through the two pieces of fabric and the paper with a quarter inch seam allowance. Change the stitch length to 1.4. A shorter stitch length will help when taking off the paper later. Unfold the two strips and iron. Continue sewing on strips until the paper is covered. The paper acts as a template and also helps stabilize the fabric. Trim the excess fabric and remove the paper. Make three more squares. I'm making them all identical to the first with the same order of colors. You can also vary the colors and width of the strips for a more random look. It's a good idea to keep the middle diagonal strip the same color and size, especially if you're using this technique to make a quilt. This will give it a stronger overall diamond pattern. Arrange the four squares how you want. You can have all the diagonals running in the same direction. You can create a diamond or flip them to make an X shape, which is what I'm doing. Take two of the squares and line them up so the right sides are facing. If you have strips that are all the same width, it's important that the seams meet up, so pinning is recommended. Change the stitch length back to normal. Sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then, sew the other two squares together. Iron the seams open. Finally, sew together the two halves. Press the seam open. Place one of the pieces of fusible fleece in the center of the front piece and iron it on.
do the same for the back piece. Or you can use batting that you would pin on instead of ironing. You can quilt the fabric a number of ways. I'm going to stitch in the ditch, which means sewing right on top of the seams. You can also quilt the back any way you want, or you don't have to quilt it at all. I'm sewing straight lines that are half an inch apart. You can either add a hidden zipper or hand sew the pillow closed. I'm doing the zipper option so that it's removable. Place the front and back together with right sides facing. Change the stitch length to the longest for a basting stitch. Sew with a half inch seam allowance. Press the seam open. Lay the zipper facing down so it's centered on the seam and pin. Change the stitch length back to normal. Change the foot to a zipper foot. Sew an eighth to a quarter inch away from the zipper on both sides. Use a seam ripper to tear out the basted seam on the front to reveal the zipper. Make sure to open the zipper. Pin the front and back together with the right sides facing. Sew around the sides with a half inch seam allowance. Turn the cover right side out and poke out the corners. Insert the pillow form and the quilted pillow is complete. You can get many different looks with this technique by varying the fabric, the width of the strips, and the layout. Making pillows is a great way to try out other quilt block patterns as well. Thanks for watching this OFS project.